I want to welcome you if you're a visitor with us today and and uh, just pray that God's blessing will be upon your life. We've been sharing a little bit lately about uh, uh, renewed minds, renewing our minds, and, and I, I want to sort of do this for a few weeks because it's a fairly big subject, and, and I don't want to get deep into it because it's, I just want to make it as light as I can so that we can navigate our way through some things and so we can change the way we think and change the way that uh, you know, we, we react to certain things so that we can become successful. Otherwise, we shut ourselves up to the things of God. So I just want to read uh, again in the book of uh, Romans, chapter 12. And uh, it says there, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, verse 1, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's an amazing statement. Christianity or Christians at large have been conformed to the world. We've been lulled to sleep. We've, been, uh, we've taken the Spirit of God out of our relationship with God, and it becomes a formula. It becomes a, I don't know what, how, how I can explain it, but as we go through, perhaps we will. I, I believe that we've drifted away from so much of the reality, so much of what God expects of us, so much of what God uh, wants us to uh, know and, and uh, move and have our being in. So I want to speak again about the, uh, renewing the mind. And first of all, I want to ask us the question, why do I need to renew my mind? Why do I have to have my mind renewed? You see, my mind is my emotions and my will. My emotions get... How many people know that we are very emotional people? And we have a will. That's why Jesus, you know, not my will but thine be done. And so sometimes our will can stop us from flowing with God and take us in, the, in a different direction from where God is. Our subconscious gets very, very involved. We've got a subconscious, and if you're just sitting somewhere and you start to think, it's your subconscious that gets involved with you. It's, you know, you might start to rehearse some things that have happened to you. You might start to think on something negative. You might start to think on something. And, and, and if, you can, if you dwell on that too long, you go down the gurgler. So we've got to renew our mind so that we think right. If we don't think right, we're in big, big trouble. Our subconscious stores the past and reacts accordingly, whether positive or negative. Our subconscious reacts. That's why God said to Joshua, he told him three times, be strong and very courageous. He told him to meditate on the word, not to go this way or that way, but to meditate on the word and to do what the word of God told him to do. We renew our mind by the power of God, by the word of God, by the anointing of God. Do all that is written in it. You see, Joshua was born in slavery. He saw the hand of God, but he didn't enter into the promises of God. If I can say this about most Christians today and the church today, we read about the positives of God. We read about what Jesus did. We read about what he tells us we can do. But many of the church, many of us never, ever experience the promise that God has given to us. And it just becomes another story. And when we hear some of these things that, you know, we, we, our subconscious said, ah, that's nothing. That'll never happen. But you see, if we get our minds renewed, then we can change a lot of the way we, think, we, see, we see things. So Joshua was born in slavery. He saw the hand of God, but he never entered into the promise. He wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years. He saw people dying, 
at his right hand, his left hand. People were dying all over the place. Plagues took people out. One time, 23,000 people died in a day. He's seeing all this negative stuff, but he, he realizes that when Moses was there, Moses talked about a promise of going into a promised land. They saw the promised land, but they didn't walk into it. They walked away. Now for 40 years, they're wandering around in a dry place. The church might be wandering around in a dry place, but somehow or other, God's going to fulfill His promise. Do you believe that today? So we've got to, obviously something's got to happen. So he saw that he's wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. Now Moses is dead. In, re in reality, Moses was his hope. Moses was the way in. Moses now is dead and is gone. All he knew was hardship, disappointment, and loss. And so here's, here's the, I don't care where the church is right now. All I know is we need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We need somehow or other to change the way we think to God thinking, to kingdom thinking, to, to what God said. In the last days, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Uh, there will be a revival fire. You will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will cast out devils if you can believe. So it's our belief system. You see, if Joshua hadn't heard the word from God to meditate, be strong, don't, don't look at this, but look, look at my word, let my word come. You see, for Joshua to be able to lead a nation that was in mourning into the promises of God, he had to have his mind renewed. If he hadn't listened to God and was encouraged by what God's word said, be strong. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. And though he may have felt negative, though he may have felt discouraged, though he may have felt a failure, though he may have felt defeated, he had to, instead of saying, I'm, a no, I'm nobody, Moses is dead, now it's all over. Instead of that, he had to start to rehearse what God said to him, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You are my champion. You are going to take the people in. And he had to renew his mind. He had to renew his thinking. Otherwise, he would have balked at the Jordan. Otherwise, he would never, ever have crossed the Jordan. Otherwise, he would never, ever, ever have taken that wall city. He would have seen Jericho and he would have seen the wall cities and, and, and it would have been so impossible. But you see, as he saw the obstacles, as he saw the river, as he saw the river that, by the way, was in flood, as he saw the negatives, he had to rehearse inside him. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. No man will ever be able to stand before you. I will be with you. I will go before you. I will be your strength. Be courageous. Don't, don't whimper. Don't, don't walk away from the battle. I am with you. Friend, that's what we've got to begin to do today. God is with us. He said, I'll never, ever leave you nor forsake you. I will never, ever do that. And that's what, otherwise you would never have been able to do that. You see, your subconscious says all kinds of things. Sometimes it reacts to our past. Someone that's been hurt, used, or misunderstood will react. Is there anybody here that's ever been hurt, used, or misunderstood, or misrepresented? <laughs> See, that's us, and that, that's the, the thing that God knows about us. And it's now coming to help us to break through. It's now coming to help us to, to change the way we think. I am not a loser. I am more than a conqueror. I am not a failure. I am not whatever the enemy wants me to think. So let's say you've been uh, used or heard or misunderstood. Say your boss or your school teacher or a coach is trying really to help you improve, 
to do better, etc. But your subconscious will sound an alarm on the inside of you. Anybody understand what I'm talking about today? Your, your subconscious will sound an alarm sign. That, that, and they'll say this, what they're really saying, <laughs> what he or she or whatever it is is really saying, you'll never make it or you are no good or, or we really don't want you. And that's not what they're saying at all. They, they want the best for you. You're not good enough. They don't want you. For us to go where God wants us to go, we have to have our minds renewed by the anointed Word of God. Everybody say anointed. Anointed Word of God. Father, I ask you to help us today to break through, to break into, to, to be able to, to become the, the church triumphant, the church victorious, ruling and reigning with you. Lord, we don't want to be led by our hurts and by our emotions, but we want to be, we want to be led and, and, and taken forward by the power of a living Savior. Jesus, come and help us today. You see, in Matthew chapter 16, I'd like you to have a look at that with me if you don't mind. Matthew chapter 16, an amazing story here. Matthew chapter 16, how many people love the Word of God? It's got an answer for everything that you and I will ever face. This is an amazing story. In verse 1 it says, Then the Pharisees and the Sadducees come, to, come and testing him, this is Jesus, asked that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said to them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites, you know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Then he goes on and says, A wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then he left and departed. Here are the disciples, they're with him, they're with Jesus. And they're having just a, a normal day with Jesus there. And all of a sudden, the Pharisees and the Sadducees come and they ask him this question. And Jesus reacts to the question because he knows that they're trying to test him. All Jesus wanted to do was do good. Only wanted to help them. But they're trying to test him. Show us a sign from heaven. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign, but no sign shall be given to it, to you except the prophet Jonah. I would imagine that the disciples would have been thinking, man, that, you know, that, I wouldn't mind seeing a sign. Anybody else mind seeing a sign today? I, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, lightning or somebody jump out of a wheelchair or, or some great manifestation of God. Didn't seem such a bad question, but man, he, he really got upset with them. And, you know, man, I don't know what's going on here. So anyhow, then they go to the other side and they go to their boat and they sit in the boat and they, they have a look around and, and then one of them said to the other one, where's the bread? Where's lunch? One of them looked at the other and said, we forgot to take bread. We forgot the bread. So what I'm saying is they're looking at themselves now and, and how many people know that sometimes you don't need anybody to condemn you? You can condemn yourself. Anybody else here? Or this, I might have just Robinson Crusoe on this island. <laughs> you can condemn yourself. You can tell you, you, you know, all these things that happen. Nancy's going to be mad with me because I just broke the vase. Or I did this. And you come over and you, and you don't know how she's going to react. And I said, oh, man, I broke the vase. She said, I didn't really like that vase anyhow. <laughs> you might have put yourself through hours of agony. So our subconscious starts to react to us. 
And these guys are saying, oh my goodness, we forgot the bread. We forgot the bread. He's not happy. Here's Je and then all of a sudden they see Jesus walking down the road towards them. And here he is walking down the road towards them. And they're thinking, the first thing that's going to come out of his mouth is, where's lunch? <laughs> but instead of that, out of his mouth comes, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they look at each other and they said, it's because we forgot the bread. <laughs> it's because we forgot the bread. He, Je <laughs> Thank goodness Jesus knows everything. And he knew, what, he knew their reasoning. He knew what was going on. But what I'm trying to say is our subconscious will totally cause us to misunderstand what, well, they misunderstood what Jesus was saying, and we can misunderstand what the Spirit of God is saying, and many times the Spirit of God will work through a person. And we misunderstand and we say, that person doesn't like me or this or that, and we get the wrong concept altogether. See, we've got to be very, very careful what we think and how we see things. And Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, it is because we have taken no bread. And Jesus being aware of it, Jesus is aware of everything that you are thinking that's wrong, and he will do whatever he can to get our thinking right. Because you know what? God is going to use his church. I will build my church that the gates of age will not prevail against. I thank God that Jesus has never stopped working with his church. And I don't know about you, it's not a building, it's me, and it's you. And he's working in you and now to try to get you out of yourself, <laughs> to get you out of negativity, wrong thinking. And the only way to do that is to have your minds renewed. And so Jesus, he, he's talking to them there. Let me just get back here. And, and, so, and they reason among themselves, it's because we've taken no bed. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, O oh, ye of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. <laughs> you already knew about it. Then he said, Do you not understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 how, and how many baskets you took up. Let me say this. These guys were privy to one of the most amazing signs and wonders that you would ever see on the planet, that they took a couple of loaves, the five loaves and a couple of fish, and he broke it and he fed 5,000 people with it. There were so many baskets full left over and here they are, they're sitting in, and they think, we've, we've forgot the bread. He's, and he's trying to say, and let me just say this. You might have had experiences, and you might have seen some things, and you might have seen manifestations. And if all we're going after is manifestations, we're in trouble, because manifestations soon fade away when you find yourself in trouble. It had the greatest manifestation you could have ever seen. 5,000 people being fed. Amazing. And now they've forgot the bread, they've forgot everything. You see, when your subconscious comes into a negative environment, you forget all the promises of God. You forget what God has promised us. And I want to tell you that he has given us precious promises, amazing promises. Do you not understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up, nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up? He's going to really emphasize it now. Large baskets. 
<laughs> reminds me of that fellow that's sitting there, and and uh, the, I think the guy's got a new Ford or something like that, and he's bogged, and and the Ford comes up beside him and and says, uh, "You want a you want a hand? He says, Park, I'm parking." <laughs> Just park him. <laughs> I've met that fella. <laughs> Holy Ghost can come by. I'm parking. I'm okay. <laughs> you want to hear what you got to say? <laughs> I'm parking. <laughs> oh, better cut it out. Oh, oh it's funny. It's so funny. <laughs> Nor the seven loaves of the four thousand, how many large baskets you took out, took up. How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? And they understood that he uh, did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You see, I, 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 I think my subconscious as a Pharisee or a Sadducee. <laughs> and what it's trying to tell me, it's doctrine, it's, it's theology that I'm no good. Look, friend, I don't, it doesn't matter what you say about me today, God says I'm good. It doesn't matter what things go on. But you see, there's times there when you go down the gurgler, same as I go down the gurgler. When I allow my subconscious, my that negative thing to come over me and you think you'll never make it or you think this and you think that. Somebody might have said something to you that, that has offended you. Somebody might have said something there and, 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 we, and we just get, we let the enemy run all over us, friend. It's not a time to let the enemy run all over you. It's time to have your mind renewed. It's time to let God be God. The, the, the flesh reasonings uh, cause them to hear something that was totally different to what Jesus was saying. Past sin, past hurts, past failure will cause our thinking to rush to the negative. But somehow or other, let God come into our lives. I want to read a psalm to you this morning, just as I close. And I wanted to just be short this morning because I know a lot of people want to go away and and have lunch with different ones and Father's Day and goodness knows what else. But just Psalm 103, we, we could almost recite this. And I want you to meditate on it. I want you to meditate and, and, and start to read the, again the, the New Testament. Start to read the promises of God. Start to, start to read all that God has done for us, all that Jesus has done for us. It says here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. Forget not all of His benefits. God, I, I want you to reveal your benefits to me. The benefits. And it says, Who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Friend, all I want is Jesus. I love that song. And I love that song. All I want is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. I need you more, more than yesterday. I need you more. Jesus, I need you to come and, and, and wipe away all the negatives out of our lives. Past hurts and disappointments will affect you. I believe that God's plan to establish His kingdom has got to be, He wants to establish a kingdom our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us. Give us. Help us. 
Come, Lord Jesus, come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. To establish His kingdom, He must deliver us from carnal thinking into kingdom thinking. You've got to be able to be like Joshua and break that stronghold, break that thing that got around his life. Can you imagine what it was like to be born into slavery? Can you imagine what it was like to, to have gone and eventually got out of slavery and you think, oh man, just like when you and I got born again. Nancy was talking the other day at the ladies' meeting and she shared what she, what she shared with me and uh, with, with your ladies and, and about the little grub screw. See, when you first get saved, you, you, you fall in love with the Savior and, and He sort of comes in, a, in an amazing way around your life. And all of a sudden, he, nothing is too difficult. Everything's possible. You, you're driving your car and you, and you see the light is red and, and, and you think, Jesus, you're going to turn it to green for me. <laughs> and how many people know that it always works? <laughs> And, and as you, you might be silly little things, but, but you, you just sort of, nothing is too difficult and you just believe in Him for everything. You believe in Him for everything. I, I, I guess we could tell story after story of the simplicity of the things that we believed God for when we were young. When we were young in God, I mean. When we were just born again. And I dropped this grub screw into a great big pile of sawdust because I was building my home and I used to sweep all the sawdust out the back door and just had this great big pile of sawdust and, and rubbish. And the little grub screw that's very, very small, as I was trying to put it into the doorknob, it fell out and dropped into this thing. And I just, because there wasn't any stairs, I had to go right around the front, ran down the front steps saying, praise you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, you're going to help me find it. And just walked in there, picked up the grub screw, walked back up and put it in the door. And you tell people about that, those sort of things, and some of them will be grumpy bums. Oh, no, grump, no, no, sorry. You say, Jesus, help me find a grub screw. <laughs> Jesus, help me find a grub screw. I used to be like that one, but I matured. No, you didn't mature, you just died. <laughs> Fall in love with Jesus again, amen? Fall in love. All I want is Jesus. All I want is Jesus. I just want to think about Him. I want to think about His goodness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Poor old Joshua is growing up in that negative environment. He had to change. Ooh. Oh man, there's a cheeky spirit around here. How many can people can catch my drift this morning? Can identify with it? Go home and get hold of the New Testament and start to read it. Look at what your Savior did. He hung upon a cross. Hung upon a cross. They whipped him before that. They spat on him, and yet he did it for us. We're just going to receive the communion wine right now, girls, and we start to serve. Those who are going to serve, just come. I want you just to meditate a little bit on what we've been sharing. Can we just all shut our eyes for a moment? How many people here honestly would say, I need to have my mind renewed? Would you just give me a bit of a wave? I can get a bit of an indication. Two, three, ten, hundred. <laughs> would you do that by renewing your mind by reading the Word of God? See what Jesus says about you and let it fight for you. God watches over His Word. He watches over it to perform it. Watches over it. He, he will help us. He will deliver us. He will set us free. You see him 
what he what he suffered and how he went through life. You might notice we've got a little these are little flash ones, okay? Little flash ones. Please don't spill it all over yourself trying to undo it. I was going to have a little trial run to see how to do it, but and it's not the little cross and all that. We're we're not going to the Catholic, okay? But this is just for the Corona thing that some people have been a bit worried about. The way we oh no, don't tell me that's wrapped in that other thing. How do you get that out? There's two layers. Oh, the top layer. There's two layers, folks. Read the instructions on the bottom of the cup. <laughs> hey? Mull and crumble. Well, how are we going with oh, praise God. Are we doing all right here? Eh? I hope it's not real plonk. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Am I going red? I think I should. <laughs> Hello, Em's got it. She's got it. It's this cat, that cheeky spirit is here for sure. <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> uh, lucky the meal's not here. She'd get it. Oh, we just love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Feel like <laughs> we shouldn't be doing this. This is communion. <laughs> I think we'll give these a miss next week. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We all served. We all okay. You know the ones that's got stain marks all over your clothes when we go now. <laughs> you right? Okay, here we go. Father, we just want to say thank you. We've had a bit of a joke today, but. You, your word said for the joy that was set before you, you endured this. You paid the price for us for the joy. And, but it is a good thing today that you did it for us and we thank you for it. Let's just eat and drink today in Jesus' name. It's like cough medicine. <laughs> How many people want to go back to normal next week? Uh, <laughs> oh, shut. Can we get the musos up? Oh, Father, my Jesus, my Saviour. Folks, just let's bow our heads for a moment. If you're, if you're with us today and you really don't know Jesus or you've sort of drifted away and Christianity has just become really just something that's not really all that relevant to you. But somehow or other, deep in your heart, you, you really want Jesus to come and, and be your Lord and be your Savior and be your friend. 
I'm just wondering if you're like that today while everybody's got their heads bowed, not eyes closed. If you'd just give me a wave and say, Neil, that's me today. Oh, I'd really like to know Jesus re in reality. You slip up your hand today and that would be great, acknowledging that. Today then, if you're here and you know that there's been a blockage, I'm going to call it a blockage because over not just one time but time and time again you've come to a place and something in your subconscious has risen up and you felt unwanted or you felt whatever it might be. Nancy prays for a lot of people and when she's praying for them, there's a real deep hurt in their life. She, she says to them, do you know where this started? Do you know where it came back, where it, where it ended? And I usually say yes. It might have been when I was a child or when I was a teenager or when I was this, such and such happened. And Nancy's got a scripture there that says that you've got to go back and cut it off. You go back to that place and cut it off. Stop it. Because it will keep reoccurring and it will stop you from becoming everything that God wants you to become. I don't know what we're going to sing up there, but I'm going to let the girls work it out. But if you're here this morning and, and you want to say to that thing, I want to stop it. I want, I want that thing to stop. I don't want it to continue in my life. I want to cut it off right now. Because it's in my subconscious and I'm going to have my mind renewed. I'm going to believe right. But just let's all stand to our feet today. And if that's you today, and I would really love for you to come and let us pray with you. We've had a few jokes and a few laughs, but really this is very serious. Amen. Don't be like that bloke that is bogged and somebody comes by to try to help him out of the bog, tries to react, I'm not really bogged, I'm just parking. When we're bogged, we're bogged. We need to get somebody to help us out. One shall put to flight 1,000, two shall put to flight 10,000. The prayer of agreement is very powerful. I believe the Spirit of God is speaking to some people today, and you just need to come. doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means that you're bogged. <laughs> I've seen brand new cars bogged. Just needed a little bit of a help. Give me Jesus. We'll just sing it one more time and you just come today if you feel you just want to help out of the bog. Yes, Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Thank you, Father. We thank you for today. And Jesus, just uh, this great day, touch people. Lord, let the word linger in their heart. Father, I pray that people will go searching for the, for the truth. The Bible says it's the truth that makes us free. The truth, not, the, not what our subconscious, not what the past hurts and disappointments are saying to us, but the truth right now. You said this is a whole new way of living, brand new life. All things are passed away. All things become new. Lord, we thank you that the past is dealt with and, the, and we've got a, a, an amazing future. And Father, for that we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you today. Have an amazing day.